I'm here. Present. Kristen? Present. Steve? Present. Jerry, I am here. I will call the meeting to order, uh, starting with the Pledge of Allegiance, which is I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, prior to the election of the commission officers, we do need to sign this as an official member, which she will take care of. Stand here. Yeah. It's on. Okay. Perfect. No, no, no. no Bible. <laughs> I'm just no. going to have you repeat after me. Okay. I, Carrado Cirillo, having been appointed to the Board of Police and Fire Commissioners. I, Corrado Cirillo, being appointed to the Board of Police and Fire Commissioners. Swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully discharge the duties of said office. And will faithfully discharge the duties of said office. To the best of my ability, so help me God. To the best of my ability, so help me God. Okay. Yeah, she's got Congratulations. <laughs> All right. <I'm> <laughs> Thanks, Melissa. Thank you so much. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right. First order of business election of commission officers. We have the role of president and of secretary. I believe they're the only two commission officers for this board. So I will officially open the floor for nominations for president. I will put it to nomination Larry Salmon. Second. Larry, do you accept your nomination? I will. Or remains open for nominations. What was the other position you mentioned? Secretary. That'll be next. Mm -hmm. Are there any other nominations? Any other nominations? I knew everyone's name better. I probably would not. <laughs> you I, know, I know there. I saw one other uh, email, but is it Kristen? Yeah, that's Kristen. me. Right, Kristen. Nope. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. I'll entertain a motion that to close easy. the nominations for that was good. I like that. Close. I have a motion to close nominations. Second, Second by Kristen. Okay. With nominations closed, I'll entertain a motion to uh, nominate Larry at, uh, to approve Larry as president of the Police and Fire Commission. So moved. Second. We have a motion and second. All those in favor, please state aye. 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 Interim chair votes aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations, Larry. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Uh, now, does Larry take over? I would think, think. Yes, yes. I would think so. Another. So you're taking the secretary. Okay. Um, <laughs> Hallelujah. Well done, sir. Thank you, Jerry. I'd okay. um, like to open uh, nominations for the position of secretary of the Police and Fire Commission. I nominate Jerry to continue in that role because he's so good. Second. All right. Is there any other nominations? I have to say this three times. Yeah, you. Any other nominations? Any other nominations for secretary? Uh, not. Hearing none, I'll ask for a motion to close nominations. So moved. Second. All right. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in for a for a closing, say aye. 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 All those in favor of Jerry Jones as Secretary of the Police and Fire Commission, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Welcome, Jerry. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Congratulations. <laughs> and with approval of the minutes, moving down the agenda, if we may. Make a motion to approve as presented. Second. Any discussion? All right, hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, minutes are approved. Items for discussion and possible action. Um, I, along with every other commissioner, received an email for this I, Ops, Fire Ops, is that correct? Yes. Okay, appreciate that. 
Um, is there a, Jerry, you are going. To yes, I will be attending. Thanks, Thanks Jerry. Mm -hmm. well, anyone else interested? I'm interested, but I have a small claims hearing that morning. So I, it's yeah. on May 24th. They right? do this annually. So, so, so you told me we, we, do one next year. we will do one in house. I'm, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll attend maybe yep. the in house one I'm thinking. Okay. I may be out of shape, but I got to experience it to know what these guys go through. <laughs> Mike and I will be glad to answer any questions on the fire ops if you have any. Otherwise, yeah, that's pretty. The board sounds pretty good. Yeah. And thank you, Jerry, for going. Uh, Chief, you want to talk about item seven, Citizens Fire Academy? Yep. Um, so um, we and this is going to be our third uh, annual Citizens Fire Academy that will be opening up in uh, the fall. So our application process will go open up sometime in June, at the end of June. And uh, class will begin sometime in August, at the end of August, August 30th, I believe, and, and go into October 28th or something like that. It's a nine week course. Uh, every week is a little bit of classroom and then you go out and do the hands on. Uh, so uh, the, the uh, participants are, are doing everything we do. They get measured for turnout gear the first day. And then they um, all the all the uh, practicals, if you will, are all optional. Nobody is mandated to do that. So if for some reason somebody has a bad back and they don't want to put an air pack on, they can participate in everything else and not just do the that course that whenever the class is. Um, we would love, truly love to see some of our commissioners attend. Uh, I realize it's Wednesday evenings for about eight weeks, the ninth week being graduation. I know it seems like it's a lot of time commitment, but if your schedule makes you miss one or two classes, that's absolutely fine too. I, there's no test. Um, and if I pass, anybody can pass. So. Uh, Really? Is this is my mic on? Hello. What, um, what time? What time is it from? Yourself, it's usually, <laughs> usually from six thirty, uh, six o'clock till nine. Um, and truly, we all our comments from the first two classes have been phenomenal. And Maya, I would love to see you attend, or or somebody. Truly, um, it is. I don't a, know that I can fit in the gear. You will. It, I, it, I'm a little short. If I fit in the gear. <laughs> You will fit in the gear. I'm sorry. I will share with you. Um, but yeah, it is. It's a phenomenal course. You will learn every aspect of what we do. Uh, we kind of married <clears> it <throat> off of uh, the police academy that they've been doing very successfully for a long time. So um, yeah, I'd be glad to, or Mike and I will be glad to answer any questions, but uh, we'll we'll be sure to announce it and give you uh, an email with, with the process when, when it comes to be open. Thank you. Any, any questions for the chief on this? Okay. okay. Hearing none, um, Chief uh, Domagowski, number eight, please. Approval for promotions within the police department. Perhaps for Toronto, a little history, Chief, of what, how and perhaps you intend to for Toronto to let him know what, how this came to be. Sure, we had a, a retirement of Captain Jim Beeser on April 19th, and so we'll have vacancies that we're trying to, to fill. So I've given you letters regarding those and resumes of um, the people that I'm requesting um, you approve for promotion. So the first one is I'm nominating um, for, promo for promotion subject to your approval, Lieutenant Doug Tennyson to the rank of captain. That would become effective on May 14th, and the promotion ceremony would be on May 22nd. May 26th. Yeah. Um, effective the 14th. The okay. Promotional ceremony. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Doug's been with the department for 26 years. He has a bachelor's degree from Whitewater and a master's degree from UW Oshkosh. He's had all kinds of other training. Um, he's been a lieutenant for a long time. Seven and a half, seven and a half years. He's <laughs> been a lieutenant in both um, CID, where he currently is, and in patrol. Um, 
very well qualified candidate. Does anyone have any questions? Um, Chief on this particular promotion recommendation? Move to approve. Second. Well, I, this looks fine. I just try to be thorough. You know, I don't want to I'm sure you would be. <laughs> right. Okay. Then all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you, Chief. Next, please. That would then create a vacancy at the lieutenant rank. Um, so I hereby nominate and promote subject to your approval, Sergeant Matthew Walsh, um, to the rank of lieutenant. Same thing, effective May 14th. And the ceremony for swearing in is tentatively scheduled for the 22nd. Matt's been with the department for 30 years, um, has served in all kinds of different um, areas of the department as a detective for 14 years, has been a sergeant for the last three years, has done a phenomenal job for us. Matt has a bachelor's degree from Platteville and is currently completing the um, program at the Southern Police Institute. Any questions for the chief? I know, uh, officer or detective, or I know Sergeant, Sergeant Matt quite well from years of working with them. I just wonder if when somebody has put so many good, solid years of service, such as Matt has 30, is that a concern uh, that he may be looking at retirement that you're putting somebody? I mean, I mean no, Matt's experience is invaluable to us. I would so the, agree. the more that we can encourage him to stay around and retain him. That's certainly acknowledging his strengths by promotion. Yep. Yep. And he's, like I said, he's currently at the Southern Police Institute at University of Louisville right now, completing a, a, an outstanding program. And that just shows his dedication to keep learning, learning more and being willing to share that with our young officers. So I think that's really cool. Excellent. Any other questions? Jean, please. Um, so his valuable uh, experiences in training, do you see him as a good trainer? Is that I see him for teaching the, the young officer, okay. sure. He spent 14 years as a detective, and so that's really valuable on the shift too, being able to guide okay. and, and train. And he has an experience leading investigations, conducting investigations, okay. doing interrogations and interviews. Um, so, so he has tremendous uh, experience and the ability to to teach and okay. develop our young yeah, officers. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Hearing none, a motion to approve. So moved. A second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Lastly, Chief. Uh, Kevin opposed. So then that would create a vacancy at the sergeant rank. So I nominate and promote subject to your approval, Officer Kevin Post, uh, to the rank of sergeant, effective May 14. Um, Kevin's been an officer um, with Sheboygan Police Department for six years. He was an officer for you and Polar before that. Um, he's on the accident reconstruction team. He's been your officer for the last two years for us. And so I believe that he's a good candidate and will do well. Any other questions for the chief? Hearing none, I ask for a motion to approve Kevin Post in the Senator's position. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, Chief. So we're hearing the matter of the complaint of Justin Daniels. Uh, Mr. Daniels. Okay, so Mr. Daniels is here. You're here uh, representing yourself. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Chief Domogalski is here and uh, Adam Westbrook is representing him. Uh, and our purpose here today, so the, the, the purpose of the hearing today is, is simply to uh, set a scheduling order. And so for the, the commissioners, uh, basically uh, because, because there are there is the likelihood I've heard from, from both 
uh, that they may be filing some procedural motions ahead of even the hearing. Uh, the idea here is to sort of set a schedule so that everybody is aware of the process and how it's going to, uh, how it's going to be followed. I have asked both uh, Mr. Daniels and Attorney Westbrook um, to uh, be prepared to sort of let you know as a police and fire commission sort of, you know, generally uh, what kind of a time frame they're going to need. I think we're going to want to make sure that, uh, first of all, we set a time frame, uh, a deadline for filing any procedural motions ahead of, of the hearing, and then giving the other side time to respond uh, to those, and then most likely uh, a date to be scheduled for disposition of any of those sort of procedural matters first before we then move on to the actual substance of hearing. Um, that, that's, you know, certainly you have, you can do whatever you want in, in terms of that, but I think that sort of a, uh, a schedule probably makes the most sense to make sure that we follow the, 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 the process uh, and everybody understands what the process is going forward. Uh, I can answer any questions that you have about that before before we proceed to sort of engage with Mr. Daniels and Attorney Westbrook on how they how they'd like to schedule things. Any questions? At this point. All right. So, uh, Mr. Daniels, since it's your uh, complaint, I'll start with you. Uh, do, do you have a sense of uh, either a number of motions or an amount of time you're going to need to file your motions? Um, I guess I probably have a few. Um, one I'd like to address as urgently as possible because it could affect, I guess, in my opinion, how this proceeds from here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what kind of a time frame are you going to need to file those motions? Um, okay. And you'll be able to. You said you've had a number of motions. A week will be sufficient for you to file those in writing. Um, so it's, let's see, today is Tuesday the 9th. Do you, you probably want to go into next week for, for the oh, deadlines? Oh, at the end of next week, Friday. The, next week, Friday. So that would be the 19th. Is that acceptable, um, Attorney Westbrook? To receive his? To receive his? Absolutely. Yeah. And um, so... What I'm going to do is, well, let's create something, and then I'll have you as a commission vote on whether you like that schedule. Uh, Adam, as far as filing motions yourself, is that sufficient time for you as well? Well, probably not. I have two um, overall motions uh, to dismiss, and then I have ten uh, motions planned on the substance of the complaint. I'm happy to put all ten of those in one document so that there aren't ten documents. Um, but the two standalone uh, motions need to be filed separately. So if I could have 10, maybe till the 26th um, to do that, just so the commission knows, uh, I am adopting two children on Friday. Uh, so I will be <laughs> I will be at home with a four-year-old uh, all of next week. Um, so I, I can work while Mickey Mouse Clubhouse is on, um, but uh, some a little difference uh, and additional time to get the rest of those motions filed would be appreciated. So I would say that 26 is, uh, for me, would be reasonable two weeks from now. And it seems to me it doesn't prevent you from filing them earlier, but it maybe makes sense to have the same deadline for both sides to, uh, to file. So uh, would that be acceptable to you so that yep. each side would have to file motions by the 26th. How much time do you think you would need to uh, respond, Mr. Daniels? The 10 of them? Well, I'm not an attorney, obviously, so I guess um, maybe a couple of weeks. Okay. Yeah, I, 10 days to two weeks. So if we go, it, it, that so the 26th is right before the holiday weekend, but if we go two weeks out from that, that brings us out to the um, 9th, I think, of June. June. So that would then indicate um, responses, written responses by June 9th. Does that sound acceptable to everybody? You're okay with that? Yep. Okay. okay, and then my thinking is then we should, we should schedule um, a hearing on those motions uh, as soon as possible after the 9th. I will say 
that um, our office, it will be uh, closed. Well, at least the attorneys will be out of the office the following week, Wednesday through Friday, because that's our uh, Municipal Attorneys Institute. So one option, and I think you probably are gonna want a little bit of time to read the responses. So I'm gonna suggest that sometime the week of the 19th for a PFC hearing on the, uh, on the motions would, would make some sense to me. Um, do you wanna set a date now or do we just wanna say that, that you'll work to schedule a hearing the week of the 19th. Well, let's, let's, take a, let's just take a minute to let our commissioners look at their calendars yep. and see if that particular week works. May I ask, uh, will the commission want arguments on the motions at the hearing or will there only be responses to the written submissions? That's up to the commission what they want, they want to do. Are we talking replies? No, no. Are you going to want to hear arguments okay. at the hearing versus just responding? Just to kind of gauge how long that hearing is going to. I, I would. So my anticipation would be to at least give an opportunity for at least a brief response. Uh, that would seem to be to make sense to me because there's not necessarily going to be reply briefs. Unless there's a request for reply briefs based on the responses. I'm not an attorney, so I guess you guys tell me what you want the commission to do. Before we go any further on this discussion, let's just let us look at our, our calendars if anyone doesn't mind. Okay, yeah. Chris, what I'm doing. Yeah, I just um my I guess my question is like what what do you think the time frame is gonna be for this type of meeting? Just so that I can kind of figure it out in my schedule. I think with 10 motions plus another two and then a couple from Mr. Daniels. That's a significant amount of time. I would think you're going to want at least half a day. Okay. So, and I'm definitely not opposed to hearing arguments from both sides. I think that's probably, especially when you got 10. Yeah. So that way they could be summarized. So, um, Let's start with Kristen and yeah, go around I, with so I, I apologize because this is going to be like, I can probably finagle the 19th, uh, the 20th. Do the week is the 19th. I Monday. could do it's that. Monday. I could do the afternoon. Hmm. I could do the afternoon after one o'clock on the 20th. And then I, I can free up my afternoon. I just, that's what we were looking at, right? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, the 21st is really out for me. <coughs> and I could do the afternoon right now of the 22nd, and I could do all day on the 23rd. I would say for me, the afternoon of the 22nd and all day on the 23rd works for me as well. Okay. Just to narrow it down. Yeah. Uh, since, those are, since those two are being picked, I'm going to go with those also. Because okay. I'm pretty open on those two dates. I think I can manage anything. Gene, you can open them. You're okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we both? Why don't all of us just set aside the afternoon of the 22nd, perhaps starting at one, mm -hmm. and keep open the 23rd in case we have to go into that next day. Sure. That sound okay, Trinia? We'll have to notice the date if we're going to go into the 23rd. My suggestion would be is that if you you know, let's try to finish it on the 22nd. And that, okay. gets, yes. that prevents okay. notice of okay. That would be good. all on the 23rd if we think we need a whole day. Yeah, I can do the Maybe whole day. I, I think that might be best instead, instead of doing a continuation. Okay. That you. way all the arguments are fresh in our mind right when we're making the decision. Yes. Okay. Even though there are numerous motions that I plan to file, I do not anticipate <laughs> that they would that they will be complex. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think a, I would think a half day. I don't know what uh, Mr. Daniels is, but my motions, I think a half day would be more than sufficient to address them because they are not complicated. So you want to keep them on the afternoon of the 22nd then? That would be my preference if we can. That's fine. All right. Yeah. And that would be One here? One o'clock, okay? So. Yeah. And it would be here? Yeah, likely Okay. in this room.
So then, um, I guess the question then becomes, do you want to set a hearing date or do you want to wait until the 22nd knowing what may be in front of you? Because some of the motions may, you know, I'm sure there's two motions to dismiss, but then there's also motions that may affect what is coming in as evidence. Um, and so uh, your choice is to either set a date now or wait until we know what's going to be before you on the 22nd and set a date. And that's really your, your preference as a commission, although I would suggest that if Mr. Daniels or Attorney Westbrook have preference on, on those um, for them to weigh in. I mean, it's so if it's up to me, I'd rather set it now just because of my mm -hmm. work schedule. It's not easy for me to move stuff around always. I understand. Okay, this other date is to make a decision. This, a decision. this would actually be the actual hearing. Hearing, the, the hearing on the evidence. Okay. So we're only doing on the 22nd, we're doing the hearings on the motions. Right. Adam, Justin, do you have any objection to setting that now? Uh, I don't. I just, I guess, would like to point out I plan on having many people come as witnesses. So I guess in the full day, at least we'll cover the appropriate. Do you, at this point, how many witnesses do you anticipate calling? Probably at least eight or nine. Okay. How many do you anticipate calling at this point? I would not have an idea until I see a witness list from them. Okay. I would assume so, some of them will probably cross several of mine are from the police department. Well, let's look at the week of July 10th. I'll be out of the country at the last end of the month. Wow. You too, Christopher. I'm out of the country in a week. So I'm actually all right. Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, this is past that, so. Okay, so the week of the 10th, though. Okay, so the 11th, I have one meeting that I can change and I am free the rest of it. I have a full day on the 11th open. Let's go with that. <laughs> you guys like that? Like 11th? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Perfect. Okay. Gene, I didn't hear from you, but does that work? 11th, yes, Oops. fine. Yeah. And then the all day, is that what we're, we're shooting for all day? Yes. Okay. Yeah. There's eight or nine witnesses. Right. Okay. So what I'm going to suggest then, uh, uh, that what what the uh, commission may wish to do then is to uh, instruct me to put together a scheduling order for the parties that indicates that motions uh, uh, are due to be filed May 26 with responses June 9th. A hearing on the uh, on the motions at 1 p.m. on June 22nd, and with an anticipated hearing all day July. Did we get that? I'll move. I'll move to ask Attorney Adams to get that scheduled. I'll second. Exactly what he said. Second. Okay. Very good. Any discussion? All right, hearing that, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I have a few additional. Yeah, so yeah. let's let's give both sides if they have any additional things they want to bring up at this point ahead of the motion. So let's start with Mr. Daniels, since it's your motion. Uh, so a few questions. Some of the policies and procedures, I believe I was given some requirements as to when I need to provide evidence. I think it said I need to provide each commissioner paper copies. Uh, I have a date, well, my internal investigation reports are about 300 pages. So, yeah, somewhere in there, 250 to 300 pages alone. Uh, so, that's over a thousand pieces of paper I'd have to submit to you guys for just that alone. Then I have DWD complaints, um, written statements, all kind of other documents. Are you, is it allowable for me to provide these to you digitally? So, or, or would I have to file a motion for that? I, I would suggest that if you've got if, if you want to provide those things, file, file a motion to do that. Some of these are not gonna be sort of technical motions, but right. things like, please may I uh, be allowed to file my documents electronically and those kinds of things. And if there are things in the policies that you wish the commission to change for this hearing, you can request that. 
um, you know, that they always have the ability to, to consider those things. So I, I, that, doing that as part of the motion process would probably be the best way to handle it. That way that also gives Attorney Westbrook an opportunity to respond. And similarly, if he has similar requests, you would have the opportunity to respond to that. Um, secondly, I don't know how to approach this because again, not an attorney. However, I have some grave concerns about Attorney Adams' participation in this. Um, he's had inside knowledge of this for the last two years. He's been involved in several meetings with city officials, including Chief Donagelski for what my complaint revolves around. So I, in my opinion, he's biased with this event. And I, again, I don't know how I approach this. I don't know if I should file a motion, but I think for, I guess for fairness, he probably shouldn't be a part of this. If you can provide any evidence as to his bias, that's something we'll consider, but you gotta have evidence of that to make that claim. Saying you have an opinion without evidence, that doesn't fly. You got to remember, he's the city attorney. Okay, but if you have evidence that he's shown bias, if you can produce documentation, some recordings or something like that, that we can consider, we'll do so. But otherwise, just having an opinion that he's biased, that usually doesn't work under the rules of evidence. How about a defense attorney come in and testify to his bias regarding this? In, in regards to this matter or some other matter? This matter. That would be okay. That's something we would hear. Okay, I'll check on that. I'd suggest you do that as a hearing, as a motion as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then lastly, um, have you guys reviewed my written complaint at this point? They do not have the complaint yet at this point. Okay. Well, once you guys, I guess, look at it, I just would like to point out today to uh, section, uh, section 6213.5G, which allows you to place the chief on paid suspension. During the uh, outcome of this process, I feel like this is clearly a situation where that should be invoked. Um, my allegations against the chief, which I obviously believe I have the preponderance of evidence for, is that he has committed a crime and that he has covered up a crime by Officer Brian Prey. Uh, Prey's actions are currently being criminally investigated through a John Doe proceeding, which I filed. It's on CTF under my name. So that is being criminally investigated as we speak. So the fact that this man is still in charge of this police department is quite terrifying, quite honestly. So you certainly have the option to do that. Again, my suggestion to you though, would be that this is another matter that's really appropriate for a motion so that he can make his case for it rather than just simply say you should do this. Well, I guess my argument is that this doesn't require making a case. It says you can read the written complaint and place him on suspension. So my argument is the written complaint. I understood, but he said we haven't seen the written complaint yet. So we, That's why we're going to have to do that. Do it. Yeah, we're going to have to do that. Anything else? Thank you, Westbrook. Yeah, so uh, I would like at some point the commission to make a decision on what rules of evidence they will be following. I know as a quasi judicial hearing, you do not have to follow the federal rules of evidence. Um, however, I think knowing what rules of evidence you will follow will be um, helpful in writing and crafting motions, particularly given the nature of some of the alleged um, violations. So I'm not looking for that now, but ideally, sometime before you know, motions are due to know what uh, rules of evidence will be followed and won't be followed would be appreciated. Well, under section 18 is whether or not we can relax the rules of evidence. If there's a preference that you want them relaxed or if he wants them relaxed, you know, so hearsay doesn't come in and things like that. I think we should have a motion on that also. What do you think? I think so. Yeah, so, um, and, and I understand you're not an attorney. Um, and I'm not saying you should contact an attorney, but there are rules of evidence. Uh, they're in uh, chapter nine, 901 through, I think it's like 909 of the Wisconsin, Wisconsin statutes. And that's the rules. We, we wouldn't necessarily follow the federal rules because rules, those mimic the federal rules of evidence. You may, may, may want to make yourself familiar with that so you understand that. And that would be helpful to you, I think. So uh, I, I was in law enforcement for 15 years. Okay. Uh, pretty decent. 
you don't follow any of the rules of evidence. Sure. So I guess that being said, I understand you're an attorney. That's correct. So am I going to be badgered in this hearing, kind of similarly to how it's been going today? Because if he's the attorney representing the city, you're well, throwing legal I'm, jargon at I'm, me. I, well, I'm trying to explain it to you, though. I'm trying to be helpful to you. Okay. That's all. I, I could certainly review the evidence. <clears throat> yeah. So, no, I, I, I'm, that's why I'm, I'm telling you what I'm telling you. I, I want to make sure you're fully apprised. It, it may, I, am, I have not spoken to Mr. Daniels, but given your familiarity, we may be able to stipulate to what rules of evidence we can follow, will be followed. I would prefer we follow the state or federal rules yeah. of evidence, but I don't know if. Right. And so Section 18 does say that civil rules of evidence, I, I take that to mean the state rules would apply unless it's deemed in the best interest of justice to, to do that. I think a motion in that regard is, is certainly appropriate. And, and Attorney Westbrook brings up another issue, I think, which is certainly if the parties wish to stipulate the various things related to the hearing, you know, that, that's not going to be a problem. Obviously, any stipulations will have to be approved by uh, the commission. Uh, but if you're able to work any matters out, whether they're preliminary matters, whether they're matters of evidence, whether they're stipulating to certain facts, you certainly are free to do that and, and present that uh, to us ahead. Whether if they're factual things, just do it ahead of the actual hearing on the 11th. If they're procedural things, do it ahead of the, uh, the hearing uh, on the 22nd. Uh, and then it'll get presented to the uh, commission for their determination at that time. So just so I understand correctly, no motions about evidence mean we're going to follow the civil rules of evidence. Right. If there are no motions, then it would be the rules of evidence. Yeah. Well, I'm going to take a minute and have Chuck or esteemed fellow commissioner uh, give us a brief uh, introduction about rules of evidence and what we're talking about before we just automatically toss it in the air. Okay. Yeah, so the, the rules of evidence really are about what, what kind of evidence can be presented and what's the basis for providing that sort of evidence. So for example, a common uh, set of rules of evidence is those around hearsay. How can you bring in, in hearsay? How do you buttress that? And typically hearsay is not allowed, but then there are all sorts of rules exceptions that allow you to bring hearsay in various situations. So if there's going to be hearsay evidence, there's likely to be an objection from one side or the other, and then the side uh, wanting to bring in uh, that hearsay evidence is going to have to show why uh, some of those exceptions uh, are, are uh, required. That, that I, hearsay, I think, is probably in my experience, I think the closest thing to this kind of hearing is, our, is what we do in municipal court because we often are dealing with uh, pro se um, defendants in municipal court and hearsay is probably 98% of the, um, the rules of evidence issues that we come up with. And, uh, but there may, you know, there are, I don't know, what, what do you think there's anything else besides hearsay that's relevancy. likely? Yeah, relevancy. Relevance, relevance, yeah. You know, uh, prejudicial, probative type stuff you know yeah whether, whether the evidence that's being submitted is more prejudicial than probative as to the facts like right. someone doing something 37 years ago that's heinous but right. if he's a changed person you know that type of stuff you know yeah. so okay so we have those excuse me commissioners jump in i just don't mean to mm -hmm. so, so as far as the uh, f findings you know i'm I, when i hear rules of evidence i automatically think uh Beyond a reasonable doubt, uh, et cetera. Those no. three things, but we're not talking. Yeah, okay. evidence is to be persuasive, stuff that supports your position. Very good. Okay. okay. It's something that you you propose that A plus B equals C. You gotta it's it's not mathematical like that or algebraic, since I'm using algebraic number uh, letters. It's it's more of a you have a position, you're supporting it with both okay. testimony, documents photographs and things of that nature. Okay. Okay. Um, whether or not it's beyond a reasonable doubt, those are standards of, of, uh, of meeting the burden of proof. Right? Yeah. That's different than the evidence. Those are I mean, okay. you get there by putting in the evidence right. and then 
for, for this, we have what's called the preponderance evidence, which is considered the lowest burden of evidence. Right. Preponderance being more likely than not, or in Wisconsin, we call it a um, substantial, uh, substantial factor, or substantial certainty, which is different than the middle burden, which is clear, convincing, and satisfactory. And of course, the highest burden is beyond, uh, uh, beyond a reasonable doubt, okay. which is using criminal law. Uh, the other ones like... Uh, Clear, convincing. Those are usually using using fraud cases, internet, intentional tort type cases, things like that. Okay, thank you. Um, well, understanding hearsay and relevance, those certainly make sense. Prejudice, I think, is the other one. Yeah, prejudice. Well, more, more prejudice or more, 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 you know, something that is going to inflame the members of the commission. You know, stuff like that. You don't want okay. neither side should be there. Okay. <clears throat> so. Uh, why don't we put your thoughts about uh, to uh, request uh, as far as evidence uh, making a decision today is to I don't uh, think I, I think we'll wait and then if yeah. a motion is filed to relax the rule, yeah, I'll I mean, respond when that motion comes. Yeah, that's fine. But I don't think we need a response today. Okay, that's fine. I do have three other things. Given um, how discovery and evidence works in this hearing, that you are provided it essentially at the same time that I would be provided it, I would ask that, obviously the complaint will be given, but I would ask that any evidence <coughs> wait until after you have made determinations on hearsay so that you are not uh, given items that should be excluded um, when you are given the evidence. Since again, unlike in a civil or criminal trial where you don't get the evidence until those decisions have already been made, um, I, I would ask that you, well, I, 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 I totally understand what you're saying. Um, and, you know, anytime as, as, as the lawyers in the room know, and probably everyone else here knows, anytime you get an allegation, it isn't, it isn't automatically true. We go through something called due process. The person gets to refute that by putting in their own evidence. That's why we have these type of proceedings. It's why we have a civil court. It's why we have a municipal court. It's why we have a civil a small claims court, it's why we have commissions like this, when we have complaints from citizens against people in authority working for the government. Everyone gets due process, everyone. And that's that's what I wanna make sure everyone here is understand, including Mr. Fields, because you know he's obviously <coughs> committed to what his complaint may be, and he he, ha he has the right to due process too. So. Mr. Daniels. Mr. Daniels, I, 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 I apologize. Just, I know I got the Justin part right. I, I, I apologize for that. Are you are you requesting that <clears throat> no evidence be provided to the commissioners until after the substantive or until mm -hmm. after the procedural motions have been heard? That would be my request, or that they're provided to me, to to us first to determine if there's things that we would like to object to being admitted as evidence. So, commissioners, it is it is at least reasonable. Um, to request that uh, if there are, if there's going to be any uh, documents or statements entered, that they be they, they be provided to each other, um, so that they could, so that there's an opportunity to make motions uh, on those things. Um, that that at least is uh, is reasonable, and perhaps one of the ways uh, to do that would be to consider. Uh, Given the timeframes that we have, including some additional deadlines uh, for provision of uh, all documentary evidence and for provision of a witness list, yes, that that might be one way to handle that. Uh, and and then what we, I would suggest, if the commission is okay with that, is that basically the instruction would be that those items would be provided to each other, and then and to me as counsel for the commission uh, before before they get broadcast directly to uh, uh, the commission. And realistically, uh, you know, the parties should be communicating with me as counsel for the commission as well, rather than directly with the uh, commission. That does make some sense. Um, as far as a time frame, does either of you have a sense as to the time frame ahead of the hearing that you would want those things? So with the May 26th, deadline for motions. It sounds like 
Mr. Daniels has the majority of his evidence already compiled. Is that a fair statement? Yes, sir. So even though I'm off next week, I can for certain read documents while whilst watching a, a toddler. Um, so I mean, if if Mr. Daniels is willing to provide them to me today or tomorrow, I think I, I would still be able to meet that 26 deadline to add any additional motions if there are specific items that you know I that are problematic before you even make your rules on on you know evidence. I know one of one of your concerns was you weren't sure what your witness list would look like until you knew what, what Mr. Daniels' witness list looks like. And Mr. Daniels, do you have a set witness list that you're already ready to go with? Or are, Okay, we don't, you don't have to do that necessarily, but um, would you be um, able to provide uh, a witness list and uh, would you, you'd be asking for a witness list and what else? Sort of, uh, well, his witnesses would include the subpoena list, yeah. um, the, the list of individuals who he will be asking our, the president to subpoena. Um, yeah. I, I personally am okay waiting till after the ninth. Um, given that there will be motions to dismiss individual claims as well as the entire complaint that I understand the witness list will fluctuate depending on ultimately what counts are heard and what counts are not heard. So I am fine waiting till the ninth. If it's ready before then, I'm, that's fine as well. Okay. Your motions aren't necessarily reliant on uh, knowing Correct. Who's his, whose witnesses are or no. the nature of any of Correct. So perhaps the way to do it then, since responses are due the ninth, and then we would have a hearing on those on those motions on the twenty second. Um, uh, perhaps you, you're, we're not going to have we're not going to until the twenty second. We won't actually have a ruling by the commission on what's happening next. And so perhaps that witness list and um, you know a list of documents should probably be provided sometime between the twenty sixth, twenty second of June, and the eleventh. Lie. Can I ask how long, uh, how far in advance a subpoena request would need to be made in order to meet the requirements to have that person ordered by the 11th? Usually 80507 requires 10 days. 10 days, yeah. So it would have to be between the 22nd and July 1st. July 1st. Mm -hmm. So, um, and we're probably going to need a little bit of time to. to to process them as well. So uh, what is the Friday after the, you know, the 22nd is the Thursday, isn't it? Um, Thursday, that's correct. I just know I will need a witness list to know who I will need to subpoena if they're not included on Mr. Daniel's witness list. No, oh, again, I'd be happy to give you names right now, but so what, why don't we do this? If, since you're willing to do that, um, it maybe makes sense to, uh, if, if you're going to provide the witness list ahead of time, um, to maybe just say that the subpoena list should be provided also on the 22nd of June. Um, and that way you'll have exchange, you can exchange with each other your anticipated witnesses and you can deal with those things. Sorry, you said subpoena list June 22nd. Yeah, subpoena list would be June 22nd. So that would be to me so that so that we can have the um, Police and Fire Commission issue the subpoenas. And I apologize, I missed the first part of the hearing. Who is the president now? Okay. So yeah, so the 22nd, I'm gonna include that in the order um, is that the subpoena list should be uh, provided on the same day as the, the hearing on the 22nd, but with anticipation that the parties uh, are going to cooperate with each other and providing to each other uh, witness lists. Mr. Daniels will do that shortly, and that'll enable Attorney Westbrook to do the same. Are there other uh, uh, considerations, Attorney Westbrook, that you want to raise now? Uh, no, I don't believe so. I'll just need to touch base with Mr. Daniels to get that witness list and then the evidence uh, as well so that we can have that before the 26th. Do we have any concerns about wanting ahead of time sort of a list of documentary 
evidence that's going to be presented at the hearing so that you're exchanging documentary evidence. So again, I think once I get the, the evidence from Mr. Daniels, I'm sure there will be things in there that we are willing to stipulate to, as well as things that may be objected to. I guess I don't know what it includes. Um, but for example, he mentioned the Department of Workforce Development complaint. There are certain things like that that I can tell you that we'll have no problem just stipulating to that and having them admitted without you know any question. Um, so I again, without knowing what is all included, I, I don't have a intelligent response for that. So, it, and it seems to me then for, for the commission, one way to deal with this then is sort of to, just to encourage the parties to work together. Um, if there's a breakdown, the parties can contact me and we can determine whether we need, you know, to be in touch with you guys about making changes uh, if, if there are problems, but we would anticipate that this will be the schedule for now. Um, and if the parties can't cooperate, we'll have to deal with that as the time comes. Can I bring up one more issue? Mm -hmm. um, so most specifically for you, I don't plan on putting the main victim in this under subpoena. So I guess I'll, I'll put a motion in for some hearsay. If you guys aren't okay with it, then I, you know, I know there's other things that you guys may have to look at, but I, I'm trying to be decent and not give too much away here. So maybe you understand what I'm saying. Maybe not. Yeah, and that's or so you. Right. That's why I would need to see the witnesses just to know who you're planning on calling and who you're not. So that I know if you're not planning on calling the chief and I want to call the chief that I need to include him. I know you're planning on. So that's why I well, just well, that actually brings up a good point that I didn't know I could. I thought he had the option to testify. He has the option to testify, but it, you know, he also has the option not to. Okay, so I can put him on the seat. Yes. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank you. As far as documents, just so we don't run afoul of hearsay, if you got a document that's like an affidavit or a letter from someone that can't show up, we won't be able to cross-examine that person, or at least he won't be able to cross-examine that person. So make sure that whoever writes the letter can be there to authenticate it just for your, just to give you info on how to do that, you know? Also, you mentioned 62135G, is that correct? 6230. 6230. 62, 30. 62 30, 5G section one, yes. 5G section one. That was out of the policies and procedures that were sent to me by Carly. That's not the statute. Are you, are you citing the statute? Yeah, you know, that uh, the statute's probably been updated since yeah, that Yeah, that's, that's why I'm looking it up and it has nothing to do with what you were saying. So you may want to look it up again. No, I'm, and this is where I'm helping you again, even though I'm not supposed to. You may want to look it up again to see, see that, okay? Just, yeah, because we update the statutes in this state every two years. Yeah, I guess I didn't look at the statute. I just went to some of the forms you guys sent me. Okay. So whatever the statute is now, the one that allows you All right. To... Are you talking sub-5 sub-G or sub-5 G? Sub-5 sub G. Yeah, because sub five sub G is for the rules for the administration. The sub section may be made by the board. But sixty two. Yeah, I just copy and paste it off of what I was sent. Things are like the other is cool. If you don't find it, let me know and we'll. I can do a little research on it. I got a statute. I got it here. The most modern one. That's going to be applicable. I guess since it's been brought up with documents and having people here, can I ask what what is considered a hearsay document? So an internal police department report. But let, let, let me. It's it's in in court. It's considered something uh, out of court statement being submitted for the truth of the matter asserted. Okay, so. There are exceptions, okay? Um, an exception may be in a, a statement against interest. Perfect example of this, two people get in a car crash. One of the guy comes out and says, I'm sorry, I didn't see the stop sign. I'm sorry, I hit your car. That's a statement against interest. You don't need that guy to come in court. You can say that he said that, okay? That's an example that I run into, okay? So something along those lines would be an exception to the hearsay. So things along that nature. 
And that's why I pointed it out where it is, where you could look for it. And because that may be helpful to you. And I can, without looking, things that are like internal, so like a police report, an investigative report, are not going to be things that I, I'm going to object to being entered in anyways, just because they're business records, they are what they are. So I, I wouldn't, I, I can commit that by the by the 26th, any documents that I are like, oh, I don't like this, you'll, I'll include in a motion why I, so you'll know what those documents are. But things like police reports, business records are, are going to be, I'm going to have no problem with because they're a record that's by an officer, you know, so just so. It's pretty much all my evidence. Yeah. And if, and if you're concerned about hearsay and whether your items or whether your documents are going to be declared hearsay and don't fit in under an exception, that's probably a reason to, to think about filing a motion to relax the rules of evidence. <laughs> Anything else? No. Right. Then, uh, commissioners, if you have any other questions, um, otherwise, I'll put together an order based on what you've described here. Um, and we'll move on from there. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Further questions? Mr. Daniels? I don't think so. Well, I guess maybe just one. When do you guys plan on reading the complaint? As soon as I get it. Yeah. So the idea is that the, the complaint hasn't been provided because they have to be, they're going to have to be fair and impartial in, in, in the matter. So they're going to, they're going to, what I want them to do is to make their preliminary decisions first without necessarily being biased by what's in that document. That, now there may be, depending on what your motions are, there may be a need for them to have that prior, but we'll do that based on your responses. Um, but the, my intent at this point is to provide it to them in preparation for the actual hearing on the substance rather than the procedure so that they're not biased one way or the other on, on, in making their procedural determinations. Now, if the parties feel differently on that, again, that's something that they can, the, the commit, that's up to the commissioners uh, in the end, if they want to receive that stuff earlier, or if you want to ask that the commissioners receive it earlier, that's something you can request. I would be fine with them receiving it at the same time they receive mm -hmm. our motions and our responses so that they have, they have the motions and responses at the same time that they're getting the complaint. Mm -hmm. um, to have everything. I, I don't think that there's, I would be okay with it coming at that point. You okay with it that way? Uh, I guess I have, I have two arguments. So, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I get this isn't a criminal matter. I get that. So a criminal matter, a judge would see like a criminal complaint and see reports prior to motion hearings. Um, so if the argument is you don't want them to be biased by reading that report, how is my complaint that I believe that you would be biased any different? So your complaint is not akin to a, a criminal complaint. It's more akin to the police reports uh, that, that buttress that complaint. Now, it is true that at some point, the a court in a, in a uh, criminal matter, although not necessarily a non-criminal matter, will receive items from that in making a determination whether there's probable cause to proceed. Here, we're not dealing with sort of a probable cause to proceed unless and until that's a motion uh, that comes before them. So because your complaint is more akin to the actual police reports, the documentation, rather than just simply a straight, here are the charges, you know, the, the citations to the charges. That's why I've made that um, determination for now. Okay, I'll just make two comments, and then you guys can decide what you decide. So I guess my point is, is I guess going into a motion hearing, I would prefer if you guys had some knowledge of what was happening before ruling on uh, procedural items. And secondly, I guess I would urge you guys to read it as soon as possible. I mean, I filed this thing a month ago, and uh, like I said, I, I, I know it's without getting into the complaint itself. I know official documentation and records where I'm getting my information from that show the chief is engaged in this conduct. Um, so again, I, 
I would urge you, based on what you're allowed to do via statute, to put him on leave prior or until this is resolved. And it's up to you guys from there, but that's just my comments on it. You have any response to that? So again, I, I would not object, and I agree that receiving the complaint when you receive the responses, so I would imagine that's going to be on June 9th or 10th-ish, would still give you 12 days before the actual hearing when you make that, so that uh, to Mr. Daniel's point, you have the complaint as well as all of our motions to be making rulings on those motions with all of the evidence, if we, not the actual evidence, but with all of the evidence um, in front of you at that time. So I don't have any problem with you get, receiving the complaint before you're making rulings on the motions. I would just ask that you not receive the complaint before we have the ability to also provide you the context that will be in the motions. So what, what I'm hearing is, is a request that the, uh, the complaint be provided with the responses. Uh, so they're gonna, they're, the parties would send the responses to me on, by no later than June 9th, and then I would send them out the same day. Uh, so then I would, if, if, if this is agreeable to you, what I would do is send to each of you commissioners on the 9th, the, the motions, the responses, and uh, the original complaint all at the same time. So you would have that. Well, I just want to know if that's his request. That wasn't my request. My request is they do it today. Well, the commission can consider either, either request at this point. I, so my advice to you is I, I think a, Attorney Westbrook's a concern uh, is valid up to the ninth. I think once the responses are heard on the ninth, there's really not much reason to withhold it from you. So the ninth makes sense, but if you wish to receive those things earlier, I think that the main thing that you have to consider if you receive it earlier, and you can receive it as early as today, is that remembering that it is merely a complaint. It is, it, there are merely allegations. I'm gonna make a motion that the commissioners be given the complaint as soon as possible. Okay. And the reason why um, this is from my civil practice, you get a complaint, I get 45 days or 20 days to answer it. I, I think we should be able to digest it. And then you know, I don't think any, any, any of the commissioners in this room would be biased by seeing what, um, <clears throat> what Justin has to say in his uh, complaint. Is, so the, I, 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 wait a second, second. wait a second. We got a motion. Yeah. 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 We have a motion, do we have a second? Yeah. Yeah. second. I'll second. Okay, Kristen okay. seconds. So the, now, wait a second, Adam. Is there any discussion? Yeah, go ahead. No, I was just trying to make oh, sure. Okay, yeah, yeah, I just wanted to see that. And, okay, go ahead. Please. So the, the difference here is that I don't, unless you, I don't have the option to write a response to the complaint. So unlike in a civil matter where a complaint is issued and then there's a response so that a judge or a jury can, can see both sides, in this case, you're only provided with one side and no opportunity for the other side to present any counter until either the hearing or the motions occur would be my I, my only response in terms of the difference between if, if i can address that concern sometimes we get a complaint and we don't even answer it we just settle because it looks good enough to us you know in the civil practice yeah, you've heard that happen mm -hmm. probably and that's why you know it, i don't think it'll buy you know we're educated people i don't think we're going to be biased by seeing what the complainant has to say in his complaint. I mean, you still get a response. We'll be doing motions. Obviously, you know, it's going to balance out. I don't think we're going to all go, oh, definitely. This is, it's not going to be the final word is what I'm saying. And I think that my fellow commissioners can agree with that, that they wouldn't be prejudiced just by seeing the complaint. I'll even add, it is just my complaint. I'm not going to make any changes. I understand that at this point. Yeah. I don't. I am in no point expecting you guys to read it and take my word as gospel. Let me present it to you. But that's, I do, you should read it. Yeah, that, that's why we're going to go with through, through responses and a hearing and all this. Like I said before, due process. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Commissioners, is there any other discussion? Adam, do you have something else? Well, can I ask then, May, will the commission allow me to file a response? There's no harm. If I can get a copy, I'm cool with it. If, my opinion if we're going to do that, maybe the best way to do that would be to uh, incorporate a deadline for a quasi answer. I, is that okay with you? Absolutely. That would probably need to be ahead of the motions. That's fine. What yeah. kind of time frame would you need for an answer? I can have it by the end of this week. 
further. Okay. So that would be the 12, 12 right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and then you have a motion in front of you to have it immediately provided. Another option would be to provide it with the answer on the, on the 12th, but that's up to you. Well, you want to say something, go for it. No, I, 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 I have no, I mean, I, I have no preference. Can I receive a copy of their response? Of yeah. course. Yeah. yeah. Everything. So everything that you file should be filed with me as counsel for the PFC and then filed with that you file with Mr. Westbrook. And similarly, Mr. Westbrook would file everything with me and, and copy you. So, yeah. Is there anything else outside of the commissioner? Fellow well, commissioners, we, have a, we now have a request mm -hmm. from our attorney to not see the complaint immediately, but rather um, see it on June 12th. Uh, May 12th. May 12th. May 12th. May 12th. It's, it's, it's May not 12th. a request. It's just that's an option. Oh, like the motion in front of you is to see it. Right? So I would. Well, we, okay. Just so you know, attorney, I think you know, but we can't address oh, even an option unless right. we ask if there's somebody else willing. Right. You know, because your right. motion in front of you is for now. Right. Okay. So yeah. if, once we put forward a motion. Yeah, it's that your your concern or request is of an option. I, I okay. understand that. Okay, but I think Very we do too. <laughs> uh, Why well, we do? Yeah. So, so we have a motion in the second. Jay? I would make a friendly amendment to the motion, please, uh, to adjust the date to Friday, May 12, twenty three, for receipt of both the complaint and the response. You accept that? I, I I'll second that. I'll do better. Uh, Not only will I accept okay it, I'll second that. it. Okay. All right. Well, now we have a motion. It's been seconded. The original motion has been uh, removed, okay? And this is to receive everything on May 12th, okay? Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anything Thank you. further? Otherwise, we're gonna move on, okay? Anything else, Mr. Daniels? No. I got your name right the second time. You did. There I go. Okay. Yeah. Make so, a motion to convene. I'm sorry. Before you go into closed session, do you want me to stay for the closed session, or are you going to be working with Mr. Westbrook on the closed session matters? That's, you it's, to... Well, you're welcome to stay, but we, you know, we. Uh, yeah, I think use... Adam has chosen to also be part right. of it. So yeah. here's what your schedule allows. Okay. Yeah. If, if you want me here, I'll stay. But if you don't need me, I'm upstairs, and you know how to get a hold of me. Is there anything we need? No. no questions or anything? I think this was pretty straightforward. Yes, I would agree. Thank you. Yeah, Sounds thank good. you so much. Thank you. Right. Make a motion. Thank you, Chairman. Close session. I'll second that. All right. We have to do roll call vote, please. Yes. All right. Um, I'll start with this one. Aye. Jane. Aye. Jerry. Aye. 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 Aye.